Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brittany New, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the proudest things that I've ever done, which is convert a school bus into a tiny home and then sell it to essentially double my money. So a lot of you guys subscribe to this YouTube video here. It kind of went mini viral and I wasn't even promoting myself as a YouTuber or a YouTube channel. You guys really like the video. As of right now, it has 85,000 views. So I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you guys have about that experience and I'm going to be telling you guys how much I spent on different things and how the price worked out so that I made a over $6,000 profit. So first, let me tell you that unfortunately, I did not vlog that experience. I really wish that I had. I didn't film it because I was so excited to get my hands dirty and start making the bus and I didn't want to slow down my production time by vlogging everything because that takes a lot of work too, especially if I had been like editing and posting throughout the process. So I just decided not to vlog it and just to kind of film the final product and that's what I did. So even though I didn't vlog it, I did take a few pictures throughout the process and I'll show you kind of what it looked like before and after and any pictures that I have from that time. So when I bought this bus and when I decided to do this project, I did make a budget of how much I was willing to spend on certain things, but I didn't really know how much anything was gonna cost me. So that budget was actually not really relevant to what I actually ended up spending. And I'm gonna show you the actual prices that I spent on things. And I actually ended up spending much, much less than I thought I was gonna spend because I changed my vision of the project the whole time. I kept changing how I wanted to do things, like little things, and actually simplifying it so that I could get it done quicker and easier. And with that, I'll also tell you how I would do this project differently next time, what I would spend more on, what I would spend less on, if I were to do this project again, which fingers crossed, I do someday. It was really fun. So first, let me tell you why I even bought the school bus in the first place. I didn't buy it to sell it, and I didn't buy it to live in it myself. The reason that I bought this school bus and my big idea was that I was going to buy a bus make it livable and park it somewhere so that I could rent it out on Airbnb. And this did not end up happening. But I looked on Airbnb before I bought this bus and I saw that a lot of people were doing this, especially in the Malibu, California area, which is near where I lived at the time. And I was thinking, I'm just gonna buy the bus, fix it up, find somebody in Malibu that will let me rent some of their land and either pay a monthly rent to them or split the profits with them. And then I would have some semi-passive income coming in from an Airbnb rental. So that was my plan. That ended up being much harder than I thought. I even went driving around looking at vacant pieces of land and making a bunch of phone calls, but it turns out that it's actually pretty illegal to have people living in a bus, even if it's on private property. So ultimately I decided to sell the bus instead. Of course, it sounds a bit far-fetched, but at the time I was like, no, I'm gonna do this. At the time I lived in Santa Monica, California, I know someone who knows someone in Malibu and this can totally happen. But it ended up being a lot harder than I thought to find uh, the land. So I ended up selling it instead. And now getting to the actual renovation, here are some renderings of the designs that I made in the computer before I started renovating the bus and then the photo of how it actually turned out. So you can see that I did um, mostly live up to the plans that I made, but I also did simplify and eliminate several things. For example, I wanted the bathroom to be an entirely wet bathroom with a full functioning shower, but there was not enough space for that. And so I simplified it down to just being the sink and the toilet. So how long did I own the bus and how long did it take me to do this renovation? It's kind of a hard question to answer because I wasn't working on it consistently. For those of you who don't know me, I spend a lot of my time in Europe and traveling, so this wasn't something that I was working on consistently, and I actually owned the bus for about nine months in total. If I had to estimate how much time I actually spent on it, because that I did not write down or document, I would guess that I spent maybe one month in total working on it if you scheduled, you know, like a reasonable amount of work, like. I don't know, six, seven, eight hours a day for one month. Um, that would be my estimate for how much time I spent on it. I had almost no help. I won't say I had no help because a few people did help me, but I pretty much did it all by myself. I'll tell you the things that I had help with. So the first thing I did was actually build the bed. And 
I kind of had help with the bed, but not really. So my boyfriend at the time and I were building this bed and I had the plans all drawn out in the measurements and he was questioning some of the measurements and saying, that's not right, that's not right. Uh, we need to get our measurements correct. And I'm the kind of person that's like, no, we're just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. And if it's, if it's wrong, then we'll figure it out when that comes. And he was kind of like, well then if, you know, I don't want to do it wrong, so you should just do it yourself. And I was like, okay, so then I did. And he really didn't help that much with it. <laughs> um, and I did do it myself and he was right. My measurements were wrong, but as I said, I troubleshooted and I fixed it and it turned out just perfectly. So at the end of the day, I kind of said, hey, come look at the bed that I made. And he looked and he was like, okay, that looks all right. And I told him how he was right, but I told him how I fixed it. <laughs> the second thing that I had help with was building this wall. I built a wall between the bathroom and the living room. A lot of framing and a lot of drilling into the metal and I had help. My mom, she builds things and my stepdad, he helped me to screw every screw into the metal that I screwed in. Um, and that includes the cabinets. He helped screw in the cabinets into the metal. I don't know why I was afraid of like using the drill on the metal because I didn't want to break every drill bit and I think he did break a few drill bits but um, I had help with screwing everything into the metal, which only was the wall and the cabinets, but I had help with, my friends came over when I, they, when I told them I bought the bus and my friends were like, we wanna help. So what I was doing that day was painting and they helped me tape all the windows and they helped me tape the black stripe. Um, so I had help with taping, but I actually painted it all by myself in three days. And I'll tell you how I did that and how that was kind of a funny story. But other than the, half of the bed, putting up the walls, screwing in the screws, and taping for paint. I didn't have any help on anything besides that. Oh yeah, and the last thing I had help with was making the video, of course. My brother is excellent with cameras and his drone, and he filmed the video that I used to sell the bus. So I did pay him for that, and I was very grateful for his help. Let me tell you how the bus came when I bought it. I didn't have to take out the seats, which was so nice. The bus had no seats in it, and it was yellow. So the first thing I wanted to do was paint it because it was gonna be a big eyesore for everyone in my neighborhood if I left a yellow school bus sitting outside for too long. So I painted it this nice beige color. I got some inspiration on Pinterest for the color. And the big question is how did I paint the bus, right? So I first, I wasn't going to paint it myself because I thought that sounded kind of crazy. I was like, you can't paint a car yourself, at least not me and I called up a few um, paint shops in the area and either it was way too expensive or people that were affordable, I couldn't fit my size vehicle in their shop. I was willing to invest about $1,000 to get it painted and I couldn't find anything in that price range. So I started looking for other solutions on YouTube and I found a guy who painted a bus with metal paint. It was Rust-Oleum brand and I watched him do it with rollers and everything and I thought this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to paint my bus. I'm going to take rollers and Rust-Oleum and paint it. So I go to Home Depot and they don't sell Rust-Oleum in a lot of different colors. So what I had to do was I had to buy red, yellow, white, and brown. Was there brown? Yeah, red, yellow, white, and brown paint, and I mixed them all together to make the beige that it was. And because it was such a specific mix and I wasn't doing it with a very technical technique, I had to make sure I had enough paint to paint the whole bus and not run out because otherwise I wasn't gonna be able to match the color again. So I bought a good amount of paint, mixed it up, had a lot left over, of course, and then I bought a black can of Rust-Oleum spray paint to do the stripe. So we sanded it all down, taped it all up and took rollers and painted it. I don't know how the paint has held up today, but I really, really hope it's held up well. In the nine months that I owned it, it was perfect. It rained a few times. In California, it doesn't rain that much, but it did rain a few times and it held up completely perfect. So now I'll talk about the quality of the bus that I bought it in. It was a 1994 bus that takes diesel fuel. When I bought this bus, like I said, it was too 
take it and park it and rent it out. So I didn't need it to be able to go cross country and that's how I was able to get a really cheap deal on it. So I did a test drive, I brought my mechanic who took a look at it and uh, we assessed the vehicle and the only thing that was really problematic was the battery. I didn't get it fixed before I sold it but the girl who bought it from me, she got it fixed and I paid her back for those repairs. So that was really the only problem. It was um, dying a lot and we got new batteries on it. I did end up getting it registered as an RV, which was really important for it to be legal to use and go in RV parks and have affordable uh, registration every year. That was a headache. That took an entire day of waiting in the DMV and making sure everything was up to standard to get it registered as an RV. By the way, that is such a joke, what you have to do. And the sink, they don't even like test if it works or anything. They just kind of look at it. Okay, looks like a sink, check. All right, well now I'm going to tell you guys total cost breakdown for everything I bought and how much I spent on this bus project. So the first thing I'll tell you is how much the actual bus costed. I got it on Craigslist for $2,600 and I think I got a really good deal. I had my mechanic come out and assess the vehicle for me to tell me if it was in good condition, if I should buy it or not, and he did not charge me for that because he is amazing. And I also had to spend $11 getting the bus weighed, and this was essential for getting the registration changed to my name and changing it to from a commercial vehicle to an RV vehicle. And all that also costed $75 for the title transfer and the new license plates that I got. Plus, I had to pay the registration for the next year because I had it for nine months. So in total, that was $2,779. Then the paint job. So I budgeted $1,000 for a paint job, but I ended up not spending that because nobody could do it for $1,000. So what I ended up buying instead was Rust-Oleum exterior paint for $140, uh, sanding and painting supplies for $50, and that totals to $190. That's it, OMG. I definitely thought I was gonna spend a lot more on the paint job. Then the bed. I bought lumber from Home Depot to make the bed, $130. I bought this IKEA futon mattress, the one that folds in half, and it was secondhand, so it was only $60. I don't know how much the full price is, but you can go on IKEA's website and find their futon mattress. Uh, it's pretty affordable, full price as well. And then I got IKEA bed linen set, like comforter sheets and stuff, which I which was all included in the price, and that was $100 totaling to 90 for the bed. So then there's the cabinets and the countertop. And the first thing I bought was these used cabinet cubbies. They're kind of just like you can see in the photo, they're these door cabinets, but they're only about a foot tall or a foot and a half maybe. So I elevated them by buying lumber and giving them legs to stand on. And then I put on top, I wanted a marble countertop, but marble is very heavy and very expensive. So instead I found this fake marble at Ikea and it's only $79. And I actually bought one piece of countertop, but this countertop in the picture that I actually made was half of the width of the countertop itself. So I had only used half of the block that I bought and the other half I had for another project later. Um, so if you were making two of these, then it would still be $80, for example. Um, so the amount I used was only valued about $40 of this marble. And the paint to paint the cabinets was free because I wanted them to be a different color. My mom had this color laying around in her workshop, so I painted them the teal. And then I found uh, fabric that would match the color of the cabinets. In real life it looks like it matches, but in this photo it doesn't really look like it matches. And that was $9 for the fabric, totaling $179 for the cabinets and counters. Then there's the flooring. I definitely thought I was going to spend more on flooring because I was thinking I would install real flooring, but I saw how easy it was to use linoleum wood. You really just glue it down, honestly, and that was definitely the cheapest and easiest way for me to get this done quickly and affordably. So I just bought a roll of this linoleum wood for $120 and normally it might be more money, but you can go to the linoleum stores and ask for remnant pieces, which is just kind of leftover pieces that aren't really long enough for a really big project. And you can kind of puzzle piece them together. I got lucky and I found a pretty good size piece. So I only needed this one piece for 
the hallway of my bus, um, but that's one way you can get really affordable linoleum is asking for remnants. And I used caulking to fill the holes and liquid nails to glue the flooring down to the floor. Some people tear out the whole floor of their buses, but I wasn't really interested in doing all that work, so I just put it right on top. But some people like to bring the floor down and take the rubber off to expose the plywood that is beneath it. But again, I was trying to do this quickly and I thought the linoleum on top looked and felt just fine. And then I did put real wood in the bathroom floor because like I said, my original plan was to make this a wet bathroom. So my plan was to put waterproof stain on the wood so that you could, in theory, take a shower in there and the water would go under the wood and drain out. Um, but I ended up not putting the shower in there in the end. So the wood is there, it is elevated a little bit. Um, and there is a drain actually under the sink so that it could be drained out but I didn't put the shower in the end. But the floor has a really nice effect. Then there's the wall, which was really time consuming, um, but I only paid 132 for the lumber and the paneling, and I did linoleum, a tile looking linoleum on the bathroom side of the wall, which you can't see in any of the photos because I wanted it to be a wet bathroom. So I covered that wall in a waterproof linoleum that looked like bathroom tile so that you could get it wet and it wouldn't affect the quality of the wood even though I didn't need that in the end and the wall trimming which you can kind of see in this photo which makes the corner of the walls a darker wood and my original plan as you saw in the renderings was to have this wall be a different color but I ended up keeping it white because it made it look more spacious and because the paneling wood that I put on top of the framing actually looks really nice and it has like a a vertical stripe texture that's really pretty so I left it the natural color then there's the bathroom part one of two first the sink I bought the lumber this is all custom built even those um, even those doors aren't real doors I built them out of the same paneling that makes up the wall on the outside of the bathroom and I put in the handles myself and I put magnets inside and put door hinges and everything um, I used some of the marble from the counter tops in the main room underneath the sink because I had left over. Um, so the lumber for that was $60. The wood stain for the bathroom floor was $30. The sink head is actually a shower head, which is actually connected to a water heater. And you can see on the, the wood there above the, the doors on the sink, you can see that there's a light switch and that light switch is actually how you turn on and off the sink. And if you want to change the temperature of the water, then you actually have to go in and like change the knob on the water heater, but you can actually just turn on the sink using that light switch. So that light switch activates a water pump and that gets the water flowing. And then the sink bowl was $20 and the plumbing and everything was $35. Um, it's all plastic plumbing and going back to that shower head um, you can actually pick up the shower head and you could use it as a an actual shower outside of the bus so that was one of the things I wanted the next girl that bought the bus to know was that you could actually take out the shower head and take out the water heater outside of the bus and have like an outdoor shower with hot water if you wanted to next for bathroom is the portable toilet and there's a very important photo of me testing out this toilet not actually testing it out but just sitting on it as a joke when I unboxed it and I got this one on Amazon it's called Thetford Porta Potty a really good portable toilet that you do have to drain outside not outside don't not outside but um in another toilet somewhere and then the water heater and water pump 170 Propane tank to heat the water was $44 and toilet brush $10 and the towel set that came with the bus was $20. So in total um, for this list is $374. Then there was decorations. I got curtains and rods, $75. These Moroccan tile stickers that I love, I got them on Etsy. They're just stickers, they're not real tile, they just stick on there. Um, I got dishes and miscellaneous objects and that totals in $230 and then another miscellaneous category, uh, slide one of two, 
battery operated push lights because this didn't have like a specific electric hookup um, created for it. So I wanted to make sure that there was light even though there wasn't like a universal electricity system in there. So I just bought battery operated lights that you could just push and turn on in both the main room and the bathroom. I got the mini fridge used for $60. I got a miniature heater for $42 and a fire hydrant for $20 because I read somewhere that you should have a fire hydrant if you're gonna live in a bus, as well as a carbon monoxide detector for $15. And all of that I threw in with the purchase of the bus. $177 total for these. Then screws, nuts, bolts, and hinges, about $45, kind of miscellaneous. And my brother's video services. He's an excellent videographer and he's very handsome and very single ladies. So hit him up if you need videos. And uh, that was $145. So there's the total. And all of that together equals 4951 including the purchase of the bus. And now I'll show you how the profit came about. So I sold it for $12,000. My expenses were $49.51. And then I ended up reimbursing the purchaser for $500 of repairs. So my total profit was $6,549. And again, this was over a total time span of nine months, but I actually only worked on it for about one month in total. So in theory, if you made a business out of flipping school buses and you found good school bus opportunities like mine for 2,600, which was obviously a really good deal, then you could, in theory, have a monthly revenue of $6,549 selling school buses that are flipped into tiny homes. So it's not a bad business idea if you are in the renovation or flipping sector and you don't have a huge budget to actually buy an entire house or something like that. So it was a lot of fun and I really recommend doing it either for yourself or for just flipping for fun. So that was the total price breakdown. Now I'll tell you how I sold the bus. So after I did the renovation and my brother helped me make the video, I put the video on YouTube and Facebook and a lot of my friends and family shared it and it kind of went mini viral. It was really important for me to sell it to a girl who was going to appreciate the aesthetics and the design that I chose for the bus. I didn't want to sell it to a guy who was just gonna, you know, change out the curtains and make everything black and masculine. I wanted someone who was going to keep the aesthetics that I intended because I put a lot of love into it. I sold it completely furnished. Everything that I bought for this bus was sold to her and uh, she was really happy to get it. I paid for bedding from Ikea, a mattress, uh, dishes, every single thing, even a portable heater that was really energy efficient. Every single thing I bought for the bus, even things that I ended up not really using, like things that I intended to use but never used, I threw it in there anyways and gave it all to her. And so when the girl came over and I saw the look in her face, a few girls came over actually. I probably showed it to about five people in like within one week when I put it up, when I put up the video. And the girl that came, I could just see her face light up and she was like, my friend sent me this video and I couldn't believe that I could actually buy this. So without hesitation, she was like, I want this bus. I don't have all the money cash right now, but I will get it to you within this much time. So we made a payment plan. I did like a financing plan for her. I think she gave me, I don't remember what it was maybe half up front and then half in payments over time. But she didn't bargain on the price at all. She took it for the asking price, which was good because I didn't really want to bargain. I kind of wanted the bid to go up higher, but I was looking to sell it uh, as quick as possible. So when later on she told me, hey, I needed to get all these repairs on it for the battery. Can you reimburse me for some of those repairs? I was like, yes, absolutely. If I had more time, I would have done those repairs myself, but I was trying to get back to Europe and try to get rid of this bus because it was parked at my mom's house for nine months and uh, she kind of wanted her driveway back. So um, I had to sell it quickly and I was more than happy to reimburse her for those repairs for the battery. I haven't kept in touch with her to see how the bus is doing and what she's doing with it, but I really hope that it's held up well and that she's getting the most out of it. So now I'm gonna talk about what I would do differently if slash when I do another project. The first thing is vlogging. Of course, I should have I made a vlog 
I mean, it wouldn't have taken me that much more time to just record a video here and there, even just to show the progress, because I have very, very little progress. I have like a few things here and there, um, but I didn't really vlog at all. I don't think I took any videos, only a few photos. And part of me was like, no, I want people to see it when it's done. I want people to see it when it's done. And that's what I did, but now I don't have the process to show to you guys as inspiration for doing it yourself. So I really definitely will blog, vlog. vlog next time I do this project. The next major thing I would do differently is if I bought another short bus instead of a full size school bus, which is a lot easier to manage and a lot cheaper to deal with, I would not put a bathroom in it at all. I would just leave, I wouldn't put the wall, I would leave it open space. I would put a portable toilet in it, just like I did with this one, which is good for when you're out in the wilderness, for emergencies, whatever like that. But anyone who is really going to be camping this bus somewhere needs a real bathroom. It needs, you need a real shower, you need a real sink. None of the stuff in this bus was really sustainable for full everyday life. And of course, having a toilet to use in the bus is good, but it doesn't require an entirely private bathroom. It's already such a small space anyway. So I wouldn't put a bathroom in it and I would just leave it open space. The last thing I would do differently would be to do the solar panels. I didn't do any solar panels and I wish that I had invested in just the most basic solar panels out there because I've since learned that there are some really affordable solar panels that will at least charge your phone and maybe even your computer and maybe even your lights. And that would be really nice to have for off-grid, completely off-grid living and even just living outside of another person's house. That way you don't have to have to run as an extension cord for just the most basic things to power. Of course, you can't use a blender or even a refrigerator really, but um, if you wanted to just have the basic necessities, then I would get a really basic solar system so that you could not have to rely on another place. The last thing is in the video, it says that I was gonna donate to Habitat for Humanity when I sold the bus and I did do that kind of so i used to work with habitat for humanity when i was in high school and i started a club at my school that was called the habitat for humanity campus chapter it's an official chapter like they have certain requirements that you go through to become one and pretty much all the money that this chapter at my high school raises goes to Habitat for Humanity. So I donated the money to my high school's Habitat for Humanity chapter. And I did that because sometimes the club will have deals with other companies such as banks and the banks will do a matching grant. So for every amount of money that the high school donates, to Habitat for Humanity, this bank or this business will match that amount of money. So I gave them the check that way, um, if they were doing a matching grant, then they would be able to apply that to their matching grant and get double the amount of donations going to Habitat for Humanity. So I used to be the president of this club and I kind of know that that's something that they do. So I donated it and I trust that 100% of those proceeds do go to Habitat for Humanity. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed the price breakdown and the story of how everything happened. And if you like this video and you wanna hear more about what I do, cause I, travel a lot, I do a lot of random things in life. Like and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos about creative DIY projects like this, creative business ideas, traveling, and living your dream lifestyle. That's what I'm all about. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.